understand the largest city in the Midwest, Chicago, is to really realize that the arts is not only a fantastic way to educate the society, but also a great way to change. It's not just about a gallery, it's not just about canvas and, and bronze and selling the artwork and displaying it. It's actually about changing people's lives, changing people's minds, protesting and celebrating. The stories that we're telling here, I think are really quintessential Chicago stories. It's about ordinary people who ended up making extraordinary things. People who would just make art in their homes that filled the public murals in these spaces to actually create community and to find ways of relating to one another. I can't make anything without calling up at least three or four or five or 20 people saying this is what I'm working on, how can we work together, how can what I'm working on support what you're doing, and then vice versa. So it's just Chicago's DIY culture. We make our institutions, we build our institutions from the ground up, and our institutions are made up of a complex network of community support. That's one of the remarkable things about Chicago, of how innovative has been out of very urgent situations like the Great Fire. There was a kind of need to rebuild the city, but not just rebuild it, but to seize the moment try out new things. It became like a laboratory almost. The city enabled people to come and experiment with art and design. There seems to be a bridge here in this city between art and design, you know, and I, I think you don't need to build a master plan to, to change a city. You can actually bring in magnetic moments and these magnetic moments, these magnetic energy moments transform the city. And that's what we can observe here. It's of course the most important thing. The most important thing in the city are the artists. The artists who work there uh, keep the city alive. The identity of belonging to a city that was created by immigrants because of the industry, the factories that were here, really does change and influence the art and culture. Yeah, when Sandberg writes Hog Butcher to the World, and when, when I was growing up, you still smell the stockyards, that says something about the city, because in the city you're always reminded that this is not a city which starts out genteel, it's a city that starts out a little rough. And that gave room, I think, for our Chicago artists to not simply fall in line with the idea of doing an American version of something else, but they could start with their own thing. And so we have artists who start here, they leave and they come home, but they identify as cultural activists who are trying to transform the world for all of us. And I think that's what makes Chicago really unique. The sort of ability to hold on to both a particular identity of our city, but also really embracing a sort of universal humanity. Like the city of Chicago, being a city that is made up of different neighborhoods, different ethnic groups, different parishes, I think that Art Design Chicago will also function in that way. Many different stories coming together to tell one narrative. So looking at the roster of programming that's happening, it's just like this color-coded cultural mapping of the city of honoring and looking back and building on what has been accomplished over the years. And then think about what our contributions are moving forward. I think we can't move forward unless we look back.